We're talking Mythbusters set up out of the bunker. Now it's been preached for 40 plus years that you need to set up open, swing along your feet line, the ball will deflect off the club and it will go towards the target. Now I'm here to debunk that myth because the modern player does not play their bunker shots like that anymore. So I've set up wide open here. So I'm targets this way, but I've set up open with my feet. My club face is gonna be open. Now, old way of thinking was swing along your feet line, club face is slightly open, the ball will deflect towards the target. That's not what the modern player does anymore. The modern player sets up more square. The modern player swings more with a, with a release. There's no drag of the handle and swinging along the feet line. It's more of a release. Uh, almost towards the target and almost like a slight draw type of a feel. So I'm going to show you the two ways that the old way and the new way. So the old way, we're setting up well open and we're going to allow this thing to swing down our feet line. So I held on to it a little bit there and that ball came out a little bit hot. Now as I square up my feet, I'm going to release this thing, hit the pin. That one came out the way that I was looking for it. Nice release. You want to be able to set up in a proper spot so that you can have the ability to allow your body to respond the way that it should. If I'm set up way open and I swing along my feet line, my initial intuitive response to that is going to be that I need to drag the handle to allow the ball to deflect towards the pin. I'm never going to feel like I'm going to release it because if I release it and I'm aimed way open, that ball is going to come out further to the left as a right-handed golfer. If I set up square or even on the closed side, now I'm encouraged to release it. There's no way that I'm going to drag this handle and shift it out that, that direction to the right. So as I set up more square or even close, I'm more encouraged to allow this thing to release, allow that club head to release in the proper way. As I release it, I'm now engaging the bounce. This is how these wedges have evolved and this is how these wedges are made to be used. They're made to be released this direction out of the bunker they're not made to be released this direction out of the bunker. So setup is a massive key. And if you can set yourself up in the proper way, now all of a sudden your body is gonna to start to respond in the correct way. And that is to get to the top, release it, allow that club head to square back up, the club face to square back up to uh, add loft, add impact, and then all of a sudden club goes through the sand really nicely and you're going to hit those high spinners that you haven't been hitting before. When you set up open and you drag the handle, most likely that ball is coming out low with no spin or even some side spin to the right. It's just not an efficient way to do it. The modern player sets up square, nice full release, allows that ball to come out high with a bunch of spin. Time to modernize your short game, get rid of those myths that you've been told for a bunch of years. We're modernizing the short game right now. That's, that's your bunker setup modernization. All right, we're doing a little myth busting today. We're gonna to talk about the flop shot. Now, we've all seen those miracle flop shots that players on the PGA Tour hit. They go straight up in the air. They take a big divot. Now you try to pull that off at your home course. Good luck with that, right? It's a very difficult shot to pull off. Now this old, Flop shot, big huge swing, feet really wide, massive swing, almost playing it like a bunker shot, okay? I've got a better way to do it, a more modern way to pull this flop shot off. We're gonna talk about that right after we demonstrate the first one, okay? So as I get into this wide stance, my hands get lower, I'm opening up this club face. Now at this point, I take a huge swing, almost like I'm in the bunker, and we've seen it a million times from some of the best in the world, and it almost takes a big divot too. Now, I could hit a great shot, or I could sometimes hit one like that, where it comes out a little bit hotter, or I could also have the one that I leave really short, hit it a bit chunky. Now, the more sort of modern way of doing it, the 
the more efficient way to do it. I call it a reliable flop shot. This allows you to engage the bounce a bit more. You can get a little closer to the ball, get the handle up just a little bit. Club face is still wide open. Hands are almost gonna go back a little bit more. Feet are closer together. Now I'm gonna take a nice long swing, but I'm gonna measure it out. I'm not gonna swing quite as hard. I'm gonna sort of dial back my tempo just a little bit. It should look a little more like this. Hands back, handle up just a fraction. Nice, long, fluid swing. Comes out way softer. That one had a bunch of spin on it. And you can see my turf interaction. Nothing there versus lots here. Because I moved that handle up just a little bit, I felt like I was really engaging the toe and not as much engaging the heel. So as we modernize our short game, we're gonna take ourselves from putting ourselves in a spot where maybe one out of 10 are gonna be a great shot to now with this way, maybe eight out of 10 are gonna be a great shot. So try that out, give that a go. That'll help modernize your flop shot. Again, out with the old, in with the new. All right, we're here talking myth busters. We're gonna talk about the hinge and hold. I see tons of people who come to me in the chef's kitchen and they say, I've been doing the hinge and hold method and I can't chip it to save my life. Now, the hinge and hold method, it has a, it has a few good properties to it, but here's the thing that it's missing, okay? If I hinge it on the backswing and I just hold, there's no chance I'm actually getting back down to the ball, okay? I've narrowed my radius on this backswing. Now, I either need to lengthen the radius to get this thing back to the ball, or if I just hold, I'm completely missing the golf ball. So the hinge and hold isn't really the hinge and hold. It's more of a hinge, a release, and then a feel of a hold, okay? And I think that's where people get a little bit caught up in the hinge and hold method, okay? Because if you just hinge and you hold, you gotta really go down and go get the ball and that's what I see a lot of people making that mistake. Or they hinge and then they release a lot and then they flip it. So to me, a more efficient way to do it and the way that the modern player is doing it is they're not necessarily hinging it a ton and then they're not necessarily holding it a ton. There's, there's more of a body motion here where it feels more pivot to pivot versus hinge and then hold, okay? see the difference on, on those two. So if I were to demonstrate the hinge and the hold, okay, I'm gonna go hinge and then hold. You can kind of see I dug into the ground a bit beforehand, all right? Now, if I was just gonna take away a bit of that hinge on the backswing and I was gonna go maybe a little more neutral wrist here. Now, even though I drop kicked it, I actually engaged the bounce better. So my, my miss actually went to about two feet versus my other miss went to about 12 feet, okay? So as I, as I take a bit of this wrist play out of it and I engage more of my body, now all of a sudden I'm engaging the back edge of the club. I've created a wider backswing, which gives me a shallower angle of attack. That shallow angle of attack allows my club to glide through the turf and doesn't allow me to dig in with that leading edge. This is extremely important. If you wanna put the odds in your favor, stack the odds in your favor. This is what PGA Tour players do to perfection. They stack the odds in their favor. If you wanna stack the odds in your favor, build that wide, nice, nice and wide backswing, nice shallow angle of attack, engages the back edge of the club, that's what it's there for, so, so that you can have a miss hit and have it end up two feet inside that circle where all your friends give you that putt and you just say, I'll see you on the next tee. All right, so to me, the hinge and hold, we don't want the hinge and hold. That's more of a hinge release and then a hold, okay? We want a bit more body pivot, body pivot. That's gonna allow us the greatest chance for success on these standard little chip shots. Today, we're gonna talk a little myth busting for the long bunker shot. Now it's been thought of for a long time when you get a longer bunker shot that you wanna take the club face and square it up to hit it further. I'm gonna debunk that myth. We're gonna take a lower lofted wedge and we're gonna keep it open as we hit this long bunker shot. So the old way of playing a long bunker shot would be to take your highest lofted wedge and square the face. 
Now, the problem with squaring the face, the second that you move the face this way, the leading edge becomes engaged. The leading edge being engaged with the sand is gonna lead to a lot of digging. We don't want that. This is what it usually looks like and what I find most players, when they square the face, what happens? They get in there and it comes out really low. They drag the handle quite a bit and you can see how it just sticks into the turf, stays in there for quite a long time. You never really get the height you're looking for and the ball usually doesn't come out with a ton of spin. So I'm gonna go down in loft to the 52 degree. As I go to the 52, I'm still gonna keep this face open. This is gonna help engage the bounce. The good thing about this is that it, it really, it keeps my release in the right manner, okay? I'm not gonna be dragging the handle this way the way that I did with the square face. So as I have this club face open, I'm gonna be able to release this thing properly, engage the bounce, and have the ball come out that 30 yard distance that we're looking for. So you can see here, that thing went through the turf much better. Ball still came out really nicely with some height to it actually, higher than the 60 degree came out. To me, engaging this bounce is always priority number one out of the bunker. Even if we've got to hit a 30 yard bunker shot, go down and loft, still open the face, allows you to keep that release the way that we want it. I don't ever want to see that release going this direction in the bunker. Give that a go. This is the way that the modern bunker player is playing their bunker shots. Use a lower lofted wedge, have that release still the same. Ball's gonna come out nice and high with some minimal sand interaction, also engaging the bounce. We're here in the bunker, we've got a plug lie. We're gonna talk about a myth buster because there's been so much information that has gone out there that says that you gotta play a plug lie with a closed, square to closed club face. This is not true. You do not have to play this plug bunker shot with a square to close club face. And I actually think it's easier and more efficient to play it with an open face. So the way it used to be done was you would get the club face and you get nice and closed uh, and you would try to almost just shovel this thing and get it out, okay? It didn't really leave you, number one, with a ton of finesse and touch as to how the ball would come out. Sometimes it would come out great, sometimes it would come out too far, other times it would be right here. The other thing is that it usually would come out really, really fast, okay? So I wanna be able to provide some softness to this bunker shot. I don't want this thing to take off on me. I've only got, you know, about 15, 18 feet uh, till I get to the pin here. So I'm, I'm pretty close to the, to the pin. This thing is running away from me a little bit, so I gotta find some finesse and some softness to bring to this shot. So I'm gonna show you both ways of doing it, okay? I'm gonna show you how to, the, the previous way of doing it, and I'm also show you the new way to do it. So the previous way, we get in, shut the club face down, and usually people get really wide, shut the club face, and then they take a big old swing at it. So that one came out, but it, it's back edge of the green at best, okay? So I'm gonna recreate this lie right here give myself a one sitting down there pretty darn good and here are my keys and here's how the modern player is now playing this plugged bunker shot so we're going to have the face slightly open okay shaft's pretty neutral i'm going to get a fraction closer to the ball because i want to steepen that angle of attack okay i don't want to be far away from it and having it rounded okay? i want to be a little closer steepen that angle of attack my feet are a little narrower okay all i'm all i'm focusing on is this hinge up, I'm going straight up and straight back down, minimal follow through. Lands just in the fringe, trickles out. Um, I'm pretty happy with that, but I can control that. That ball comes out with way more softness and way more touch and finesse than the other one, which is just a guess. Okay, so as you modernize your short game, you don't have to play a plugged bunker shot with a face that looks like this. You can open it up with the right ingredients and hit yourself a shot to inside of five, six, seven feet every single time. Today we're talking myth busters out of the rough. Now I see a lot of people who get into the rough and immediately all they're trying to do 
is find good contact. So what they'll do is they'll put the ball position back in their stance, lean the shaft forward, they'll try to hit really down on it to try to get great contact because the ball is sitting down. And we can see this ball sitting pretty far down. So I want to take the opposite of that, okay? I've, I've got about 15 or 18 feet of green to work with here. So if I use that philosophy, this ball is going to take off. I've got to hit an absolutely perfect shot to get this within 10 feet of the hole. Now I'm going to take the opposite stance and I'm going to go more open face, shaft a bit more neutral. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to embrace the grass that's behind the ball. Okay. I'm not going to try to fight against it. I'm not going to try to dig through it. I'm going to just embrace that grass behind the ball. This is going to allow me the understanding that this ball is going to come out a little bit more muffled. So I need to make my adjustments as far as how fast I'm going to swing and the type of release that I'm going to have. So the old way of doing things would be handle forward, ball position back in the stance, and I'm going to just chop down to try to get good contact on the back of the ball. Let's just see how this one turns out. Okay, so it got, I got the back of the ball, it came out screaming hot, that's probably 30 to 40 feet past the hole. Okay, so now I'm going to try to recreate the same lie. Stick it down in there, put a bunch of grass around it. So I'm going to try to recreate the same lie, and I'm going to take the opposite. So I'm going to go club face more wide open, shaft more neutral, ball position a little more forward in my stance. My release pattern is going to be a little bit more like a bunker shot. So I'm going to try to slide this thing right underneath. So as I take that club face open, shaft more in a neutral spot, more of a release with my hands like a bunker shot, all of a sudden we see that ball come out high and soft. Now I've embraced the fact that I'm going to get quite a bit of grass interaction. You can see on the face there, there's a bunch of grass interaction, okay? And I'm embracing that fact. So I'm giving it a little bit extra as far as the speed goes, okay? You can see how that ball comes out high, soft, and it actually stayed short of the hole, about six, seven feet, versus the other one, which went about 30, 40 feet past the hole, okay? I wanna allow some softness and some finesse for these shots in the rough. Most of the time, these shots in the rough are gonna come out screaming if you take the philosophy of handle forward, ball position back, chop down on it to try to get good ball contact. All right, one of the biggest myths there is in chipping is wait forward to hit good chips, okay? I'm gonna disprove that myth right now. So one of the things I see all over the place, and we've seen it for years and years and years, is get your weight forward, lean the shaft forward, put the ball position back in your stance in an effort to create good contact with your chips and pitches, okay? This is not what I want to see. I want good contact if I'm going to hit a seven iron or if I'm going to hit a driver. I want good contact, good compression. I don't want good compression here. I want to actually soften the ball. So I don't necessarily need all of these things to help me with good compression or good solid contact. I'm actually looking for slightly the opposite. I want to slow the ball speed down. So I, I don't mind it if I hit it slightly on the toe. I also don't mind it if I hit the grass slightly before the ball and engage the bounce. Both these things are absolutely okay to do when it comes to chips and pitches, okay? So as I move my weight forward, my angle of attack is increasing, okay? As I lean the shaft forward, most times what I see with players, they start hinging it and this club goes more vertical, angle of attack goes steeper. Ball position. As the ball position sneaks further and further back, this is just creating more of an angle of attack, more ball first contact, ball coming out hotter, loft getting de-lofted, okay? The club's getting de-lofted. So in my head, I wanna do the opposite of those things. I want the weight 50-50. I'd like the shaft to be more in a neutral spot. And I would like the ball position as my feet are fairly close together, my ball position is going to be slightly off the inside of my front foot. Okay, so the inside heel of my front foot. These things are going to allow me the ability to soften the ball speed, okay, and to still be able to make an aggressive swing through, which is going to give me the ability to spin the ball on these chips and pitches. 
So I'll show you the opposite way to do it, okay? Ball position back, handle forward, weight forward. This is gonna increase my angle of attack. Man, I had great ball contact there, right? But now it's over the green. You can see my divot, okay? All these things, I know you guys experience these things at home, okay? I want to be able to do the opposite and start to help you engage the bounce so that you can start to hit these soft pitches around the green. So shaft more neutral, ball position better, weight positioning is much better. You can hear the difference in the sound, right? That ball comes out a little higher, a little bit softer, a little more spin. And you can see my turf interaction. Bounce is fully engaged. To me, that's a way easier way to play off of these tight lies than trying to search for that ball contact first. Don't go searching for ball contact and compression. Search for a shallow angle of attack so that you can start engaging that bounce. This is gonna be that myth buster that changes your world around the greens.